What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we are doing a Q&A about bugs to be found in your homes in Arizona, in particular, desert areas, desert cities like Phoenix and Tucson. We put a notice out uh, earlier reminding you guys that we were going to do a live stream. So if you are just now tuning in to this live stream, uh, smash up the likes. And if you haven't uh, turned on the bell to get notified about these live streams so that you can ask your pertinent questions, uh, go ahead and turn on that bell next to subscribe and you will get notified. Thanks to every, the three people just already liked the video. So thanks to that. And also, I want to say thank you to you guys because we just passed 7,500 subscribers. Uh, this channel is not even a year old and we've already got 7,500 subscribers. So that's pretty good. And thank you to you guys for uh, tuning in and uh, watching these videos. Just so you know, today I went to Big Surf, the water park uh, down in Tempe, a pretty cool place. Uh, I don't look too sunburned, do I? But uh, the kids like it. I mean, it, the park hasn't changed for, I, I mean, it's the same ride, same everything for the last 30 years. Like I almost, they, and they charge $35 to get in there. But if you go on to Groupon, it's $20. So there's a, there's a hack for you. Don't worry. We're going to talk about creepy crawlies and we're going to do the Q and A, but uh, yeah. So I just wanted to put that out there. I did take a lot of videos. I posted that in our group on Facebook, living in Arizona, where I posted some pictures of what big surf looks like. They are building a new water park called uh, Great Wolf Lodge in Scottsdale, and they're building one in Gilbert called The Strand. Supposedly, The Strand is going to put them all to shame. But because this is about uh, bugs, we're going to talk about this. Why are we going to talk about bugs on this live stream? Because I had no idea how many of you are actually scared about moving to Arizona because of bugs, whether it be bark scorpions, whether it be desert centipedes, or black widows, or brown recluses. You guys are surprisingly more scared than you really need to be about bugs. Do they exist? Yes. Uh, so that's why we're doing this video. Some of you guys are really worried and we're going to hopefully put some uh, squash some of that anxiety that you have. So what are these bugs that you really need to be on the lookout for in Arizona? So I'll go ahead and go through this. And I made videos about this, but I talked about snakes also, rattlesnakes, which apparently you guys are also scared of. Okay. But just some creepy bugs that you'll find quite a bit. I would have to say that a bug that is really common that you'll see in your house is going to be these things called crickets. You guys have heard of Jiminy Cricket? Trick, Jiminy Cricket. Crickets are really common. I mean, every that's the bug that I hear the most in my backyard and I see the most are crickets. Probably the second most common bug that I see is ants. The third most common bug that I see is probably going to be a moth that will come onto the roof. Okay. So I don't think crickets or uh, ants or moss are too dangerous, right? So what about the other ones that are kind of dangerous that you really got to be on the lookout for? Well, that one is going to be the Arizona bark scorpion. And there's also the hairy scorpion. They're yellow. Um, these, these, these are kind of creepy looking. I'll be the first to admit that. I mean, someone posted a video in our group about they were washing their dishes and there was a scorpion right there. Now, someone even asked me, they said, well, Jeff, being that you live in a new home, do you have problems with scorpions or other pests because it's a new home? Like, has that become a thing? And I haven't had any scorpions in my house here. I did when I was a kid. I only got stung by a scorpion. It's not bit by a scorpion. It's stung by a scorpion. They have a stinger. And so I did get stung one time when I was a kid. And it was uh, pretty traumatic. <laughs> I mean, my mom was like, do I need to call? The, uh, what do we need to do? You know, do we need to call the uh, authorities here? And, uh, you know, it was it was it was a thing. Um, I'm not seeing any comments coming in. If someone could just drop a comment to see if the comment thing is working. Usually we see a lot of comments coming in and I'm not seeing any. Why would that be? Ah, there we go. We got a comment. Okay, so the comment thing is going. So if you have any questions about bugs, let's go ahead and do that. But I appreciate it to Intershield and Halle for dropping the comment. And Kathy and Mary Elizabeth. So, okay. So when I did get stung by a scorpion, what ended up happening was I was playing with toys and I had like my sweatshirt underneath my legs. Uh, you know, I was just a kid. I just got out of school and I was playing with Legos. And some way, somehow... 
uh, in the mix with the Legos and whatnot was a scorpion and it stung my leg. And basically the, the, the worst that ended up happening besides the mom freak out because mom freaked out, called the doctor, said, do I need to bring him down there? And, but for the most part, outside of mom freaking out and making a big deal about it, it was just an itchy leg for about two weeks. Now it was a really itchy leg. Okay. And so I, uh, I would say that, yeah, that was, that was a thing. It just itchy. Like that was basically it. I mean, it was like a really itchy bug bite. It stung. And then that was it. Uh, another thing that, uh, I've also been stung by, which again is not being bit by a bee. It's stung by a bee. So we have, we have honeybees and then we have Africanized killer bees, Africanized killer bees. Some way, somehow they've come to Arizona and they've caused uh, problems in the Southwest, even in California. And the only problem you have with Africanized killer bees or killer bees in general or bees in general is when they swarm you. So uh, what do they say? Don't poke the nest. <laughs> So if you see if you see a bunch of bees swarming, those might be the killer bees. Uh, as far as the little honey bees, I mean, they'll come up to you like I'll be swimming in my pool, and all of a sudden here comes just a bee, and it just wants to circle around me, and I'm like, "What's up, bee? Are you gonna go away on your own, or do I need to like let you know, get out of my face?" You know, sometimes I'll be cool with it, like I'll let the bees come around me uh, when I'm around flowers or nectar. I don't really think too much about it, but sometimes some bees are bold; they will just come in. And it looks like they want to land on you. And you're like, what's the deal with that? Those, those, those exist. I mean, you're going to have encounters with bees just like that. I don't know how it is where you're at right now, but bees are out here. Wow. 43 people watching, 13 people smashed up the likes. Thank you to everyone who did that. And I am paying attention to Mr. Perez, who just asked about rattlesnakes. Because this is about bugs, I'll answer the rattlesnake question uh, at, after we talk about the bugs. But yeah, rattlesnakes, good question. So I have been stung. Personally, living in Arizona, stung by a scorpion, stung by bees, maybe two or three times with bees, maybe once on the hand with a bee, maybe once on the neck by a bee. Um, and that those itch too, just like scorpions. If you were to say, what's, what hurts more, being stung by a bee or being stung by a scorpion? It seemed like probably, actually both were really painful. Uh, honestly, I mean, it was, it was, I remember it was like, uh, yeah, they were both pretty stingy you know <laughs> and, and itchy um and the thing is it doesn't itch until like one or two days later i don't know i would say the scorpion probably was a little bit more painful than the bee bite or sting okay so uh 45 people watching 15 people crushed up the likes thank you all right so another animal or another bug that's going to be that you're ne needing to keep an eye on is going to be the centipedes. And I've seen centipedes in Arizona this big. I've seen them in Hawaii this big. Okay, so I mean, it's not like Arizona is the only place that gets these big centipedes. I mean, when I say big centipedes, I mean six inches and the, the width of a quarter. Okay, so here's a little hose thing, probably about that big and about six inches long. I've seen them. But typically, you'll see them, they're going to be about the size of your pinky. And I was told the centipedes, you know, when they crawl on you, they have a venom on their, on their, um, under, you know, on their feet or on their, whatever they're called tentacles, but they actually will pinch you. They have pinchers. So for a centipede, it could be a centipede bite. So for, that's the thing with centipedes, it could be a bite or it's the tentacles on their feet that will, uh, cause the poison. So yes, centipedes do exist. They are, they are, um, Unfortunately, here they're called the desert centipede, and they're seen in areas uh, around Mexico. And guess what? They're carnivorous. They feed on insects, lizards, and rodents. So these bugs are carnivorous. Whereas the scorpion, uh, they're, they're you know they're an arachnid, so uh, you get stung. I, I don't know what they feed on actually, but I don't think they feed on rodents. Um, but, you know, if you're wondering how to, like, eliminate these areas of entry for uh, if we're just talking about the centipede and the scorpion, they're both going to be attracted to the same kind of thing. It's clutter. It's outdoor clutter. So if you have wood piles where you're getting ready to burn your wood and you store it up there and you just leave it there and then it rains and you got all this clutter in the backyard that just is debris and then you just keep adding to it. That's where you kind of create the environment or the habitat that's going to be inviting for those. So 
it starts with prevention and then uh you know then it becomes well i need to call the pest control guys out here to get rid of it but even then if you don't do the proper prevention if you're creating the habitats for these animals uh for these rodents and bugs and reptiles that's what it that's what it comes down to so um bugs are fine as long as they're cute and cuddly says mace travels okay <laughs> I personally don't really want to see bugs too much, honestly. And when I was a kid, we used to have this tiger bug called uh, it was a call. It was called a tiger bug. They don't talk about it much anymore. But if I remember when we were kids, we used to get what what just us and our family we called bug bites, and they would itch. You know, you you would whatever it was that was biting you. Uh, it would just, it would be a bug bite and you would just itch. It, it didn't cause any other problems other than just having these little bug bites that just itch for one week. They weren't as bad as scorpion uh, stings. They weren't as bad as bee stings. I don't hear much about these tiger bugs anymore and I haven't really seen any tiger bugs. They're black with a little red dot on them. Speaking of black with a little red dot, that is a black widow. So when you see a spider, if it is black and it has a red dot on it, that is a black widow. And black widow spider webs, they actually, um, they, cre they don't create these spire, uh, you know, we're from tree to tree. So like if you have a tree and, and another tree and it's connected that, and you walk through it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's a spider web. That's not a black widow web. That's probably a wolf spider, Danny Longlegs, one of the nice spiders. But the black widow has these little spiral, um, really tightly wound funnels that go into the ground. Those are black widow uh, spider webs, and they will bite you, and that is not a good bite to get. Another one that is not good to get is a brown recluse. Brown recluse, uh, I've seen people who have been bitten by, or whatever it is, I think they bite brown recluses. They, I mean, we're talking like really bad bites, and they start out just a little, you know, you're like, what is this bug bite? I got bit by something, and then you look at it, and it's... Um, it's almost looking like it got infected and then they got to go in there and they actually have to like extract the venom. Uh, that one, I mean, I'm trying not to scare people, but as I'm telling stories and recalling what's happened with the brown recluses, but I don't see very many brown recluses. Uh, again, with the black widows, they go into like these gopher holes and, th and then when the gopher is no longer living there, they've created the, uh, the spider web. Black widow bites can be really uh, painful and hurt a lot yeah yeah I, I say that because yeah i'm recalling some of the uh things that i've seen with that uh another spider that we have out here that people think is dangerous but it's not is a tarantula tarantulas you live here long enough you will see a couple tarantulas tarantulas are spiders they're black they're about this big you can pick them up they're not going to hurt you that you know they're, they're um they're hairy they look like they're they're dangerous, but I've never really known anyone who's had a problem with the tarantula. But I did hear that they will bite you. Uh, but I've seen people, you know, let the tarantula, desert tarantula walk all over them. No problems. So there you go with that. Um, Intershield says these brown spiders are nasty over here in the northeast. Are you talking about northeast Phoenix or northeast uh, America? Oh, 22 likes. Thank you to everyone who crushed up the likes. So. 66 people watching. Uh, Tiffany said something that people are responding to. Where is Tiffany's comment? Funny, until I started watching you, I thought all scorpion stings meant a trip to the hospital. I mean, from what I understood, I mean, it's uh, unless you get an allergic reaction. I, okay, I'm not a doctor. So, I mean, I think if, if you get bit by, if you get stung by a scorpion, uh, you should go to the doctor. Uh, if that's what you read, but I heard if you don't have an allergic reaction to it, you should be good. But some people are allergic to them. So I don't think that just because Jeff said you know, he didn't go to the hospital when he was a kid, but I remember the doctor, when we called in, they said, how big was it? If it's a little scorpion, their, their venom is more uh, toxic than the bigger scorpions. And I remember being a kid being like, oh, so the big ones are okay, but the small ones are the ones you got to watch out for. So whenever I'd see a smaller scorpion, I'd be like, oh, that's a bad one. <laughs> You know, um, brown recluse spiders are supposedly all over Illinois too, but I've never seen one ever. Yeah. I mean, I think brown recluses are a pretty common spider. Another thing that's kind of interesting to keep in mind is 
because Arizona is a transient state, which means that a lot of people come from all over places, when they're coming in their U-Hauls from Louisiana, from Florida, from Illinois, from Ontario, from Maine, they're bringing with them bugs in those boxes. And so you get these. So what ended up happening was some of these critters, these creepy crawlies weren't indigenous to Arizona, but y'all brought them. <laughs> if you moved here, uh, you know, in your boxes, you guys are bringing them. So try not to bring insects or bugs, especially if you don't like them in your boxes. You know, like when you're packing your U-Haul and you see a bug, maybe try not to bring that. I don't know. Some of you guys might call PETA if, someone, if, if you say you crush bugs because at the way PETA has been going, they might uh, they might try to protest against you if you, you tell them you squash bugs. I mean, it used to be that in Arizona, if you if you uh, I mean, this is how it used to be. It's not like this anymore. So, you know, that's like saying the Wild West used to be the Wild West. But back in the Wild West in the old days, you saw a rattlesnake. Your dad, your grandpa was probably going back out there with the shovel, to chop his head off. Nowadays, you can't do that. You cannot kill rattlesnakes anymore. They're in, they're considered an endangered species. But like I said, I mean, you saw rattlesnake on your front yard back in the olden days. And we're talking just back in the 80s. Uh, people used to just, you know, that was their. Nowadays, you're supposed to, if you see a rattlesnake, you got to call animal control. Okay. But I'm just saying that it could get to a point where crushing bugs could be considered frowned upon, uh, you know, because of the way that the, the nature of humanity's evolution is going. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but uh, yeah. So don't be saying that you crush bugs because I've even had people that tell me they'll see cockroaches here in Arizona. They'll see cockroaches. They'll, they'll say, don't kill it. Okay. But some people will say, what are you supposed to do when you see a cockroach and you don't want a cockroach? I mean, cockroaches are this big, whatever they are. I mean, they're not the cutest looking critter. And uh, your first instinct would be like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to touch it. And I, you know, my neighbors even had to call me over and say, hey, I've got a spider. Can you kill it? I'm not going to comment on what ended up happening to that spider. But uh, she's deathly afraid of spiders. OK, so Tiffany. Tiffany says, this is too much for me. I'm getting anxiety. OK, yeah. So my point of making this video was to calm anxiety, not create more anxiety. So I guess in essence, just to summarize it, do you have anything to worry about with bugs? No, no. But can it happen? Yes. It's like saying like, uh, do you have anything to, to be concerned about, about driving in Arizona? But it could happen, you know, where you could get into a car accident, right? Or, you know, should you be scared of flying? No. But do planes crash? Sometimes, especially if it's a Boeing 737 these days. I mean, geez. So with Boeing, right? Um, but for the most part, no, you don't have to worry about the bugs. I mean, in my house right now, I, I every three months I have a pest control person come out here. I don't have any bugs in my house, but an occasional moth or a cricket. That's about it. And I live in the Southeast Valley, Southeast Phoenix. In my backyard, I have anthills every once in a while, and I just get a can of Raid, and I spray those anthills. I don't know what ends up happening to them, but, uh, you know, there you go. My Alice, Alice Dark says, my biggest concern is my English pointer getting up on a rattlesnake. Her hobby is stamping lizards. She's a bit nuts. Okay, so I did say that I would talk about rattlesnakes, even though we talked about mostly the bugs. Let me make sure I've talked about most of the bugs in this video that you guys need to know about. By the way, if you're new here and you want to, um, if you're new to this live feed and you want to go back on some of the bugs, we just talked about it uh, the last 15, 20 minutes. But the ant. So the ant that I wanted to point out here is called the pyramid ant. You'll know the pyramid ant because it creates like a, a circular pyramid kind of funnel. And that's where the pyramid ants come from. And they, they're little red ants and they will sting you. But you, if you get bit by a little red ant, you know, you don't need to go to the hospital. Okay. But they're, they're pesky. Okay. Like they're the type they'll, you, you know, you, you try to get next to them and they'll crawl up your legs a little bit and you won't know they're on you. And then they start, you feel a little pinch and that's a little red ant, those little suckers. Okay, we talked about the bumblebee, so we've gone over that. The ladybug, don't worry about the ladybug. That's a, I, I did, I actually have been bit by a ladybug, believe it or not. I mean, I, I didn't even know ladybug bit, but bite, but they do a little bit. 
doesn't hurt or anything, but I was like, hey, ladybug, you look so cute and nice, but you bite. Some of these bugs, you'll be surprised. They actually do bite. Not always, but even a bug you'll touch 10 to 20 times, and you'll find out, oh, they do bite. But not all of them have venom. That's the thing. So I don't think ladybugs have venom. Another bug that you get that looks real scary but isn't is a June bug. And June bugs, they're like uh, they're like an emerald back. They, they're black, but they have an emerald back, okay? So they're like an emerald green, literally like an emerald or a jade. And they don't, they don't hurt you at all, but they're scary. They look scary. When you see them, you'll be like, whoa, what is that? Because they come in, they're loud, and they're uh, big, like maybe – you know, the size of a quarter and, but they're, they're not dangerous. So if you see one of those like black uh, bugs with the green back, don't worry about it. It's, it's not dangerous. Um, then you have these beetles. I mean, beetles, you're going to get these beetles that are just going to come out sometimes after the monsoons. You have black ones, you have red ones, and I have not been bitten by a beetle, but uh, you know, they're just little beetles. I wouldn't worry too much about them. Okay, so we're still getting a lot of comments about these rattlesnakes. So we're going to talk about rattlesnakes, even though this is about bugs. Like I said in my previous videos, my dad got bit by a rattlesnake. He's the only person I know that's ever been bitten by a rattlesnake. He was about 22 years old. He was at this place called Horseshoe Dam near Horseshoe Lake, which is out there by uh, Bartlett Lake. So it's in northeast Phoenix. Uh, he did go to the hospital. And so, yeah, if you get bit by a rattlesnake, okay, because... So, you know, you, you, you'd just be walking and a rattlesnake could be in the bushes or hiding in something and it might strike at you. And, and if it gets you, uh, you know, it, it can create quite a bad swelling. And that's one of the ones that you should go to the hospital for. Like I said, I don't know too many people who have been bitten by rattlesnakes except for my dad. Uh, he got a tattoo over it um, of the area. But um, <clears throat> I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry too much about rattlesnakes, but <clears throat> they do exist. They're out there. I'm trying to calm anxieties, uh, but like Tiffany said, I mean, she was really worried that it was getting pretty bad, huh? Um, any bed bug issues in AZ? So I did touch on the bed bugs that we used to get, uh, I, I, or bug bites that you would get when you were sleeping. Um, they were just, they were what I called tiger bugs. I don't know the exact name of a tiger bug. Let me see if I can look it up and see. I haven't had any problems with any bugs out here in my new house, uh, out here where I live now in Santan Valley, and Queen Creek. I haven't seen any of these tiger bugs, but we called them tiger bugs. They might be called tiger lily bugs or tiger beetle. Um, yeah, I mean, the one they're showing right here. Yeah, I think that's it. It is a tiger lily bug, tiger beetle. I think that's it. Um, it. Says it comes from India, but the weird thing is we had them here in Arizona when I was a kid. That was up in Cave Creek Carefree. Some of the biggest bugs that I've seen were in Cave Creek Carefree, North Phoenix. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I could say Cave Creek Carefree gets some bugs, but that doesn't mean that they're the only place that gets bugs. Also, uh, West Phoenix gets a lot of bugs. From what I've understood, West Phoenix gets a lot of bugs. But then again, my neighbor out here in Santan Valley has scorpions in his backyard and I don't. And I, he told me to get a black light, you know, one of those purple fluorescent lights. So I got one on Amazon, but I haven't had any issues with uh, scorpions yet or centipedes. But again, you know, I got, I've got a garden back there that's like a habitat for bugs. Okay, so let's see. What areas have the most scorpions? I heard Santan Valley has a lot. I haven't seen a single scorpion out here in Santan Valley. But like I said, my neighbor said he hasn't. I think it just depends. Like once scorpions create an infestation anywhere, they can infest an area. And probably, yeah, I mean, if some of the preventative maintenance is that you could do on your house, make sure the, the caulking around all the cracks is in place. Make sure all the cracks, there's no cracks that can let these bugs in. And so even in your garage, if you have any cracks where you could see sunlight in the daytime, Make sure check and see. Is there a crack? If there's a crack, what can you do to seal that up? Do you need to create a pad or a sealant or put some caulking around it to keep the uh, bugs out? Because do they come into your garage? Then they could come into your house. But ultimately, your living quarters where you actually sleep at night, you need to make sure that everything is sealed tight, airtight, right? And so do that. But 
getting a bug spray every week or every month is good. How's the bugs after these monsoons? No different than they were before the monsoons at my house. Uh, but, you know, like right after a big rain, the crickets, you hear the crickets. You might see some cicadas. Uh, I've seen I've seen really big. Uh, what are those green? I think they're called praying mantises. Big old green praying mantis on my plumeria tree. I did. I wouldn't even have known that it was there if I didn't like. I wasn't look. If I was looking at my flower, I was looking at the flowers on the plumeria, and it's a big green leaf. And I was looking at the flowers, and all of a sudden, I seen a big green praying mantis, beautiful one. And praying mantises eat other bugs, so they're considered pretty good. I think it was called a praying mantis. It was a green one. Uh, I heard if you have crickets, you will have scorpions. Well, probably. I mean, there I do have crickets. Crickets are here. I even seen crickets in my house. I need to talk to my bug guy about that because I've got crickets. You can have your dog rattlesnake trained if you hike outdoors. It may be worth it. Yeah, Arizona is one of those places where, like, when I go to the mail, if I look on the right side of the road and I there, there's this little coil, uh, cardboard coil, you know, when you open up something and then there's like a, it, sometimes it's like a cardboard uh, liner, I, it, but they left it there on the side of the road and it looks just like a snake. I remember I was walking to the mail at 11 o'clock at night and it was coiled up like a snake and I was like, whoa. And my dog, he, I was like thinking to myself, I was like, my dog knows nothing about snakes. Like he would probably sniff that if that was a snake, like, cause he's a puppy. And uh, I was thinking to myself, like, that's not good. Intershield, they're terrible after a monsoon here in Mesa. That's when the flying ants and termites. Termites, that's a big one. We haven't even touched on termites. You need to get your house termite protection because I know people whose houses were built four or five years ago. And, you know, your termite protection when you build it, it only lasts for like a year or two years. But after that, you're, you're vulnerable to termites and termites will eat your wood. And they are a problem out here in Arizona, all, all across Phoenix. So termites, you'll know termites because sometimes you'll see termites. They'll create like a little uh, nest that is, looks like dirt, but it comes down off your roof. If you see one of those little nests coming off your roof, that's termites. And you need to get termite uh, sprayed immediately. They're, those aren't dangerous to you. They're just bad for your structure of your home. Can you own pet chickens in residential areas? Chickens keep bugs and snakes away. I'm Stacy Marie on Facebook. Hi, Stacy. Uh, yeah, you can you can actually get pet chickens. I mean, I go down to the feed store. He's got little chickens, ninety nine cents each. I think they're either ninety nine cents or like a dollar ninety nine for a chicken, a little chicken, chicklet. And I asked him. I said, uh, I said, who are you selling chickens to? These people that live in these track homes. And he's like, yeah. I said, you can have chickens in these track homes in the backyard. And he said, yeah, I said, what about roosters? I don't think you can get roosters, but you can get chickens. But each HOA, you might you might have to ask because chickens can be loud. But um, I was gonna get chickens for my backyard. And the reason I chose not to get chickens is because they eat everything, not just bugs. They eat your fruit, your vegetables that you're trying to grow. So if you're not trying to grow fruit and vegetables and your HOA says you can have chickens, from what I understand is, it's common. People have chickens. So it's just like a pet. Uh, Frederick from Mesa says no roosters and no pigs. So there you go. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. So you can have chickens, right, Frederick? I mean, you're from Mesa. You, you can help me out with that one. Uh, Alice says, I saw a video about a guy talking about rattlesnake training. My pointer is hard to train. Headstrong hunting dog. Worst shot, though. Yeah, I mean, getting your dog trained in general is a good thing. But as far as rattlesnakes go, um, I mean, are you going to be living in the, the rural areas? If you're living in rural areas, like out in the desert, foothills and stuff like that, you're going to have rattlesnakes out there and around you. But if you're living in these, if you're living in the city, I don't think you're going to have too many problems with rattlesnakes if you're living in the city. But if you're out there. Uh, up against the mountain and you know you've got land and you see desert there it, in the desert wherever there's desert there's wild things but if you go into the middle of the city there's no desert in there right so if you're really worried about rattlesnakes just move into the city don't move into the to the desert foothills and most of the people who live in the desert foothills 
they already know that they could see a bobcat. They could see a mountain lion. They could see coyotes in their backyard trying to see what's up with their pets. Uh, they'll hear, hear coyotes at night. Um, they will see rattlesnakes at some point. You live there long enough, you will see a rattler. You will see a snake, a king snake, coral snake. Rattlesnakes are not the only snake you got to be on the lookout for. There's also this one called coral snake. There's a saying, uh, coral snake, how to tell how to tell a coral snake from a king snake. There is a saying out there, and I'm going to try to, uh, it's a rhyme. So the coral snake rhyme varies from person to person, but the general premise, red touch black, safe for Jack. Red touch yellow kills a fellow. So if it's red and black, it's safe for Jack. If it's yellow and red, it kills a fellow. So that's the difference between a king snake and a coral snake. So if the, if the snake has any black, it's good, okay? It's a king snake. But if there's yellow and red, then you got to watch out because that's a coral snake. So there you go. It's not just rattlesnakes. I mean, and you will see these king snakes. And some of you might think they are uh, coral snakes when they're really king snakes. But I would say if, if, if you're unsure, don't you don't need to be picking up the snakes anyway. But some people are wild. They like to pick up the, the they like to pick up the uh, snakes when they see them. They like to try and catch them. <laughs> they do. People even like kids like to catch bugs too. Like I don't think any kids are going to try to catch a spider or catch a actually. Well, kids will try to catch a spider because someone had to have tried to catch the tarantula because so many people are trying to catch tarantulas. They try to even make them pets. Don't do that though. Uh, back to 77 people watching 42 people have smashed up the likes. If you're new here and you haven't already smashed out the likes, so we get this out to more people and keep this conversation going and let's check some of the more of the comments. Everything in Mesa attracted to water. Black light your walls and you'll see if you got scorpions. Yeah, again, if you want to know if you got scorpions when you get out here, get a little black light on Amazon or from Walmart and just go out there at night and go around because little scorpions, they glow dark or they glow uh, like a purplish color. So check on that. Do you get bullheaded snakes? They are poisonous. They keep the mice and rats away. I haven't heard about bull-headed snakes i have not heard about that i mean the snakes the the snakes that we get in arizona that i know about rattlesnakes king snakes uh bull snakes is a bull-headed snake the same as a bull snake um like i said coral snake um we get, i've seen a green snake in a palo verde tree like a green snake i didn't even really know about green snakes until i've seen that one and uh, I remember the person caught the green snake. We had that in Arizona. Uh, but are bullheaded snakes and bull snakes the same? That I don't know. Yeah, they they don't glow purple. Okay, well, what color do they gl glow? Uh, if you look at the thumbnail uh, that I put up here, that's the color of them. I, I, I consider that purple, but it could be like a neon blue. Uh, maybe not purple. The light's purple, right? Um Ken Peterson, we hike uh, white tanks, recreational area in cooler temps, and they have snakes, but rare. If you stay on trails, check out their visitor center for live feedings. There you go. So White Tank Mountains, if you're moving out to West Phoenix, he's telling you about the White Tank Mountain Recreational Zone. That would be people from Sun City, Peoria, Surprise, on down to you know where Luke Air Force Base is, Goodyear, Levine, and Buckeye. You guys all would go out there. If you're in Buckeye, you might also be able to go to, well, you can go anywhere you want, right? But you can also go, you're close to South Mountains and Estrella Mountains. And then if you're in the east part of Phoenix, you can go to the Superstition Mountains, the Usury Mountains. And then if you go up towards Scottsdale, you're going to be dealing with the McDowell Mountains. And uh, if you're talking about wildlife abundance, I think the Superstition Mountains might just be the spot you want to go for that. Uh, yeah, green. Okay, so if you shine, Jalea is saying that if you shine a, a black light, the purple light on a scorpion, it will turn greenish blue, not purple. I, I, I'm not colorblind, but I did mispronounce uh, that. So thank you, Jalea, for 
assisting with that. You have bats that fly out there, especially in the summertime. I've seen bats. Yeah, we have bats. I mean, bat guano, you go into a cave, you know, when you're out there looking at Native American uh, Indian or Native American uh, Indian ruins or whatever you call them, like Montezuma's Castle and whatnot, you'll see caves around there. And if you go into those caves, even if you go up to Cave Creek, they have the, the reason Cave Creek is called Cave Creek is because if you hike up that wash called the Cave Creek, called the Cave Creek, some call it a wash, some call it a creek. I call it a creek. You go up the creek enough, you'll come to the actual cave that Cave Creek takes its name from. And if you go in there, you'll see like there, there'll be bats around. Uh, at least back in the day, you know, I haven't been up to Cave Creek, the cave, for about 20 years. But there was, I seem to remember, there was some stuff living in those caves, for real. Do they have anti-venom for scorpions? I don't know if they have an anti-venom. I'd imagine they do. Yeah, there are, yeah, there is bats out here. We do have bats. Um... Some of the other things that are not bugs that we have that you may want to know about. Uh, let's see. Gila monsters. Gila monsters are, they kind of look cool, but you don't want to touch them. They're slow moving and they, they, when they bite you, they grab on and they just don't let go. And they have like a dirty mouth that has like toxicity in it. And that's kind of what they do to their prey is they, with their dirty mouth, they inject a vent venom inside the prey that uh, paralyzes or, or hurts the prey to where they can actually swallow it. <laughs> so that's that's a Gila monster. Um, there's another lizard out here that's, that's more common than the Gila monster. For example, if you're walking in the superstitions of the white tanks or anything, and you see like a crack, you'll see like rocks. They're like cracks, right? Like rock cracks. You look in there, sometimes you'll see all types of different things in there, but that's usually where you'll find a chuck -a wall and chuck -a wallas are more common than you might think. So I've definitely seen some chuck -a wallas more, more than, yeah. And the, it's, you know, they're you're almost like you want to take a stick and try to catch it, you know? Well, that's what we used to do back in the day. You can't do that anymore. I don't think, I mean, like I said, PETA, I'm telling you guys, PETA has gotten really strict on what they consider allowable with the way that people catch animals. So um, I think PETA stands for, um, what does PETA stand for? I think PETA does some good work, but they definitely have, it's people for ethical treatment of animals. And I think bugs are now going to qualify under that. But uh, yeah, so you can't really catch these wild animals anymore because it's not considered ethical, even these reptiles. But like horny toads, for example, they're called horn toads, but we always call them horny toads. If you, even if you go to Cave Creek, there's a restaurant called the Horny Toad. Well, there used to be. I don't know if it's there anymore. It's in Frontier Town. Cave Creek is that old school uh, Arizona kind of cowboy town. Bikers hang out there. And uh, they had a restaurant there called Horny Toad. But that's where Horny Toad gets its name. It's not because some guys like to go there who like to have fun, right? Uh, Thank you to the 60 or the 49 people who've crushed up the likes. That's a lot for this time into the video. So thank you everyone who hit the like button. Appreciate it. And we have 71 people watching. Uh, ethical treatment of scorpions. Yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys are like, I don't know if I support ethical treatment of scorpions, but it could get to a point where people are saying that you need to be ethical towards scorpions. Uh, like I said, horny toads, and then you have uh, desert tortoises. You'll see desert tortoises again. You won't see a desert tortoise coming into your backyard if you're in uh, Chandler or Gilbert or downtown Tempe. But if you're out there in the foothills, you will see these turtle or tortoises. Because difference, from what I understand, the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. This is just my understanding. Please don't attack me if I'm wrong because I don't know for sure. But a tortoise only walks on land and a turtle goes on land and water. So it lives in land and water. So these tortoises that you have, they only live on land and they blend in just with the, sur the surroundings. And they're usually about this big. And I've seen desert tortoises just hiking. Uh, Black Mountain, again, I keep saying Cave Creek because it just seems like that's where a lot of wildlife is in Cave Creek. Y'all, 
you go all the way back to Black Mountain or you go all the way behind uh, Black Mountain to like Elephant Butte and Skull Mesa, there is a lot of wildlife back there in Spur Cross and whatnot. But like most of my wildlife encounters seem to be in that area back behind Spur Cross where I've seen, I mean, you go hiking from Spur Cross all the way back towards Skull Mesa, you will pretty much see it all in a two to three day trek. What I mean by that is you will probably see mountain lion, you will see a bobcat, you will see desert tortoise, you will see coyotes, you will see deer, you will see javelina. I mean, the, the not guaranteeing it, but the odds of you seeing wildlife if you go up in a spur cross area and hike for two to three days, you will see, you will see a lot of wildlife that exists out here. Um, okay, so are you guys still worried about bugs? We've already said, if, if you're moving to Arizona, don't worry about bugs. I mean, they're here, but it's like, to make your decision about bug, moving to Arizona about bugs, it's pointless because it's not that big of a thing. How do you kill scorpions? I heard you're not supposed to stomp on it because it could have babies that will scatter. Good question, Cheryl. Anyone want to help Cheryl under, or answer that question? I don't have an answer about that, but I would imagine that would probably be possible. If you step on a scorpion and it... Uh, has babies on its back, they could scatter because that's how scorpions hold their babies. If you don't know about that, Google it, where it says scorpions have uh, babies on their back. It'll show you a picture of like 100 little baby scorpions. Remember, the little baby scorpions, from what I understood, have the most toxic venom. My cats always alert me when there is some centipede or insect here. Wow, yeah, I mean, my little cat, who's an indoor cat, he sees a bug. You'll know there's a bug in the house because he'll be looking at it and he'll be like trying to, <clears throat> he like pounces on it. He like, <laughs> like does this little goofy thing. I'm like, what is he doing? Oh, it's a bug. He's trying to get the bug. He's trying to tell me there's a bug or he's playing with the bug. I don't know. So cats are pretty useful for that. Another thing that's in my backyard that I've had, uh, and unfortunately, as cute as they might look, these little field mouses, okay? Little field mouses look cute, but they carry with them disease. Seriously, I mean, like rats and, and, and rodents have some sort of like disease that's associated with them. I mean, look at the bubonic plague that happened in Europe came from rats. I mean, that's how bad it is. Even in Arizona, when the hantavirus, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about the hantavirus. It's a virus that was started mostly in the, Nav in the Navajo Nation, Four Corners area, but all came all the way down into Phoenix. And I remember in the 90s, we had a little bit of a, concern about a hantavirus outbreak, but they determined that it was from rat poop. So, I mean, the poop, if, they, if they're dropping dumplings, I remember we would see poop, like the, the rat or mouse poop, and we would see it and they'd be like, don't inhale that because it could have disease. So field mouses, I know they're cute, like I said, I mean, but they're, they're not, you know, if you want to make pets with field mouses or if you want a house that has a lot of field mouses, they will grow too. I mean, that, that population will go from five to 10 to 20 to a, to a lot. And then the whole neighborhood's got field mouses. They just, they reproduce like crazy. Um, are there a lot of Indian reservations? Yeah, there's a lot of Indian reservations. Arizona is the number one, has the most uh, Native American land. I mean, you're in Chandler. Once you're going from Chandler past Sun Lake, boom, Nav or uh, Gila River Indian Reservation. You're in Scottsdale. You go down uh, any one of those roads just north of McDowell, all the way from Scottsdale Road or S Scottsdale Road going all the way up to Shea. That whole area on the east side of the 101 is a Native American Indian reservation, and that one is the uh, I want to say the the Ho'okam. The, yeah, I, I don't know why it slipped in my mind, but here's how you'll know if there's an Indian reservation near you: is there a casino? So you'll have Auction Casino, Talking Stick Casino, Fort McDowell Casino, Gila River Casino. Uh, so whenever you see there's a casino, there you have it. That's an Indian reservation. And, and those are just the ones around Phoenix, right? So you go further up, you go up in northern Arizona, and they actually gave a lot of land to 
the Native Americans up there in the Four Corners area, like where Monument Valley is, you go up there and visit Monument Valley, you're more than likely coming up into Native American uh, reservation zones. And in case you don't know what a, a reservation is, it's a it's a plop of land that is basically the it's inside the United States, but it functions under its own governing body. And so, uh, if you go onto a reservation and you get pulled over, you'll more than likely be having to answer to the courts on the reservation, not to Maricopa County or Pima County or Pinal County, depending on where you get pulled over. So, if you do go out into the uh, Native American Indian reservations and you're driving through there, just realize, you know, the, the laws can be a little bit more strict and they don't function under the same guidelines that the uh, United States or state system uh, functions under. I'm not saying that the Native Americans are going to be picking on you and trying to pull you over to get your money or whatever, but I do know people who had some problems uh, with the judicial system on the res. R E like the res, like, you, you know, you ever see that shirt, like you'll see people from the reservations, they'll wear shirts that say R E Z life, res life or R E S life. That's what that means. Res life is life on the reservations. Uh, yeah. Alice says Southern California has a lot of Indian reservations also, but just so you know, it's actually, it's actually incorrect to call them uh, Indians because uh, the term Indian refers to, what ha the reason that they call it Indian is because uh, settlers, when they came from Europe or wherever they came from, when they landed here, they thought they landed in India. So they called them Indians. But these are not actual Indian people from India. So that's why you want to call them Native Americans or Indigenous Americans or maybe even refer to them by the tribe. And I'm just saying that's because it's incorrect to call them Indians because they're not from India. Uh, and it's funny. Uh, I'll tell you a little funny story. I was in Singapore. And I have a friend who's from India. And uh, every time I hang out with him, he's always like, you want to get Indian food? And I'm always like, yeah, of course. I, I love Indian food. And I always agree to it. And uh, he takes me to all the Indian restaurants that are really good and they have awesome food. And I went in there and it was in Singapore. And they had a picture of Sitting Bull. So, you know, sit, or they had one of those totem, like a, like a statue of Sitting Bull carved out of wood with the Indian headdress. And he told me, he's like, you know, it's funny. He's like, the Indians here probably think that that's an Indian statue too. I'm like, yeah, but they're from India. They know that that's not an uh, Indian. And he's like, they, he's like, yeah, but they probably went online and probably ordered something from uh, something called Indian uh, decorations. And that's how they got it. And I was just like, that is just funny. <laughs> People from India have a picture of Sitting Bull uh, with the statue of Sitting Bull in their restaurant in Singapore because they thought it was uh, Indian decorations so yeah, i'm just saying the the confusion is real uh even people from india are confused by it how bad are the rattlesnakes yeah we've talked about the rattlesnakes already on this video i mean the rattlesnakes are they come out i mean you go hiking you'll see them uh just you see them walk away slowly don't run i mean most animals are triggered by running believe it or not so they say like if you see a rattlesnake just walk away slowly uh, it's just like your, your animals, you start running that triggers an instinct in them to do what also start running and also start playing or something, but you walk slowly. They're not going to, you know, it's just an instinct thing. And, uh, same with mountain lions. Like you see a mountain lion walk away slowly. I think, you know, like if you see a mountain lion, I think the best thing to do is pick up some big rocks and, uh, just in case maybe find a stick or, but walk away slowly. Cause I've had people. Tell me they were out uh, like my friend. He's he said he was doing some meditation or something out in Spur Cross. And he was, you know, sitting there like this. And he opened his eyes and he came face to face, eye to eye with a mountain lion. And I said, wow, really? He's like, yeah, he was just sitting there for five minutes. And when he woke up, uh, he considered it a spiritual thing for him to have a face to face encounter with a mountain lion uh, in Spur Cross Ranch like that. But. You know, it's just, uh, it's interesting, right? I mean, nonetheless, it is interesting. Oh, well, well, welcome Earl to the live stream. If you haven't already smashed up the likes, please do smash up the likes. We have 58 of them. That helps get the video out to more people. And if you guys are new to this channel and you want to get these live streams where we answer these questions, 
you have to turn on the bell next to subscribe. When you turn on the bell, it gives you a notification right away. So the way you get the bell to go off in the notifications, like the videos, leave comments, and turn on the bell. If you don't do those things, YouTube just doesn't think you like watching the videos. So this is only a message to the people who like watching the videos. If you don't like watching the videos, then you don't have to do any of those things. Just watch. <laughs> Even watching could, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is a cool cat story. I mean, uh, it, it, he, he, I don't know. I mean, it, the way he made it sound, I was like, it kind of gave me chills. I was like, so you were meditating. You had your eyes closed. You're praying to whoever you pray to. And then all of a sudden, when you open your eyes, there's a mountain lion. <laughs> I was like, you must have been on, either you were on some really good uh, cannabis or something. <laughs> Hopefully he has his medical card, right? Or, uh, or your prayer was really deep or your meditation was really deep for you to be in a situation for right when you open up your eyes after meditation, there is a beautiful, big desert cat coming eye to eye with you. And I said, what did it do? He said, it just walked away. It just looked at him, walked away. I said, gosh, dang. If you see a mountain lion, I'm going to have to say three prayers. Oh, if I see a mountain lion, I'm going to have to say three prayers. Okay. Um, Joshua Tree has wolves. Are there wolves in Arizona? I didn't. I know. I don't. I don't think we have any wolves in Arizona. If we have wolves in Arizona, please let me know. Okay, Chuck. Chuck Miller. I believe Chuck's the guy who lives in Mesa. He says we have wolves in northern Arizona. I did not know that. I, that's the first I heard about wolves in Arizona. What are the main spiders to look out for in the Phoenix area? So the ones that are dangerous, brown recluse and black widows. I can I can give you more, uh, more of a list on the spiders, but you also have tarantulas, you have wolf spiders, you have a house spider. Uh, those are the most common ones. I mean, you might have different variations of spiders that you might see uh, in your time uh, just hanging out, right? Wolf spiders, for the most part, they look kind of creepy, but they also look kind of cute if you look up, look at them up close. But for the most part, um, I don't think they do anything. I don't think they're they're dangerous. Wolf spiders. Uh, I'm looking at this one called a. Uh, it's called a sinos bug. Cine, oh, I'm sorry, a cone nose bug. And I do think that might be the one that you get that bites you. So if you're wondering what the bed bug situation is, look up this bug right here. It's called a cone nose bug, aka kissing or assassin bug. And so they are, th this is the one that uh, used to bite me when I was a kid. I remember I used to, and, and here's the thing you don't know that it's biting you because it's got like this stealth. Like it's something about it, like when it's when it's fangs enter into you, you can't feel it. And so uh, it's yeah, but it doesn't do anything other than just create a bug bite. So it sucks your blood. <laughs> Sorry to say it like that. I mean, that's what it is. It's a it's a it's a blood sucker. I mean, it's called a cone nose bug. Again, if you're really interested in what it is, look them up, because if you see them, those are the ones you might need to call the, the Orkin man to come get. All right, so checking back in on comments. Okay, so Chuck says, dude, they reintroduced wolves here starting in 1994. I know they did that in Yellowstone. Uh, even when I went up to northern Arizona, I never knew that they had wolves up there. I mean, they have these California condors that I think they released at the uh, – so, they were, you know, they were, they were extinct, and then they come back, these wolves or stuff like that, California condors – and then they reintroduce them into the wild. That's what they're saying. But what is the total population of wolves in Arizona? Let me take a look. So I've never seen a wolf in in, in, uh, in the wild. Coyotes, but not wolves. So total population of wolves in Arizona. Let me take a look. Okay. 131 wolves are nearly evenly distributed. 64 wolves. In Arizona, 67 in New Mexico last year, the team documented 117 wolves. So that's in the southwest. It's called the Southwestern Wolf. I want to see what this – so it's a, it's called a Mexican gray wolf. 
Oh, wow, that is a beautiful looking wolf. It almost looks like a coyote hybrid. So I'll have to look into that. So I did not know about the uh, the uh, the the Mexican wolf. Do you have fire ants in Arizona? I would call them, or in Phoenix, yeah, I would call them fire ants, but I think they're not called fire ants. I think, actually, I, I mean, fire ants are these little red ants, right? And they sting. I've been stung by, or I've been bitten by an ant that was about that big, and that's typically the size of a fire ant. Fire ants in Arizona, I believe we do, but I want to make sure, because we have these little, little, little ants that are also red that um, bite. While there have been scattered reports of red imported fire ants in Arizona, this aggressive species does not seem to become established in the state. So they're saying that although there, there have been people who in their U-Hauls brought with them ants or something like this in their cars, some way, somehow ants came here, but they're saying that it, ant, uh, fire ants have not been established in Arizona as an invasive species. I'd like to think it was too hot for them and they'll never be able to exist here. So the fire ants, yeah, that's one less bug we got to worry about. There you go. Yeah, wolves are beautiful. I mean, that was a beautiful looking wolf. I mean, just Google search Mexican gray wolf in Arizona, and you'll see a picture of the gray wolf. Well, they bought the ants in their U-Haul. For real. People bring things in those boxes. You, they don't even know. They're not even doing it intentionally. Who knows what you're bringing in your, you know, you get so many boxes and they're sitting in your house for a week, to two weeks, just sitting there because, you know, you've got so much stuff to move and then you put it in the U-Haul. The next thing you know, you don't know what you're bringing with you from Louisiana or Texas or Arkansas or Maine. And that's how we get these, uh, you know, variations in bugs that didn't necessarily, that aren't necessarily uh, indigenous here. Wolves tend to be afraid of people. That's what they said. So back to the wolf conversation. Has anyone had penguins on their roof? You talking about pigeons? We get pigeons out here. Pigeons, if you if you look at, uh, I mean, you, you couldn't possibly be serious about penguins because what do we know about penguins? They're in the Arctics. I mean, they're in the Arctic areas, the cold, the cold. But I think you meant pigeons. But yeah, we do have pigeons out here, if that's what you meant. Um, ferrets are legal in Arizona, has a decent population of wild ferrets. Yeah, ferrets, ferrets. Seemed like ferrets were common in middle schools. Like you're, there was always going to be a teacher who had a pet ferret. Do you get deer or antelopes in the valley? Heck yeah, we get deer and we have antelopes in the north. Thank you, Jaleo. Uh, violin spiders, I haven't heard about that one. Dylan says, thanks, Chuck. I'm from California and they're illegal here. But I love them. Well, I'm moving to Phoenix. Which one, Dylan? Penguins are here. They just kept in people's freezers so you don't see them. Okay. Yeah, I I know where pe uh, penguins are in Arizona. I They're in the um, aquarium, Odyssey Aquarium. If you go to Odyssey Aquarium in Scottsdale on the Native American Indian Reservation, you will see penguins. That's about the only time I know about penguins in Arizona. Thanks, Chuck, for clarifying that. Are there large birds like sandhill cranes? Florida has a lot of them. Yeah, well, I've seen, oh yeah, I've seen big birds. I mean, what is it? Even just recently, uh, around about April, I was in my backyard and I saw a big crane flying over my house. And what was he probably, well, no. Why would a big crane be going south for the winter? But he was headed south, or she was headed south. So, yeah, we do have cranes. You'll see them on the creeks. you see them, yeah. So we get other big birds that we have, uh, red-tailed hawks and a, a hawk, which is, I believe, our most prized bird. It's called a Harris hawk. Harris hawks kind of look like eagles, but not really. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, no, they don't really look like eagles. They look like a hawk. But check out Harris Hawk or uh, Red Tail Hawk. Those are the most famous hawks we have here. Is there any other big cats besides pumas and bobcats come up to Arizona? I have heard recently there was jaguar sightings. And so 
This was in Southern Arizona. There has been sightings of a big cat that is not a puma and that is not a bobcat, but a jaguar. Jaguars, if I told you guys I was getting ready to go down to Mexico, right? You go down to Mexico into the Yucatan, for example, you'll see the Mayan people, they make headdresses out of uh, in, in impersonating or anthropomorphizing um, jaguars because there is jaguar population down in the in the area of the Yucatan and Belize and Bolivia and stuff like that. And I think even in central Mexico, there's some jaguars. And back in the day, we used to have jaguars here before they were hunted out of existence. So just to hear that we have heard that there has been sightings of jaguars in south southern Arizona around Tucson. There you go. Uh, as far as other cats in Arizona, um, I did once see a cat that didn't look like a bobcat or didn't look like a puma, a mountain lion. Uh, but I don't, I, I, I don't know what it was. It could have been, it could have been a bobcat, but I don't think it was. There's also a cat called an ocelot. It might have been an ocelot. But ocelots, you would know because of the way their fur is just so uh, unique. But ocelot would be another cat that you you might see, particularly in uh, in southern Arizona. Tucson gets a lot of these kind of weird animals that you don't quite see all the way up here. And even as you go closer to Mexico, you'll see more of these like animals, like a Cotamunde, um, which is like a ring-tailed cat. But it's more like a cross between a cat and a raccoon called a Cota Monday. No links. Not uh, again. Uh, that guy, Chuck, if, if, if we get links out here, you, you might be able to demystify that. But as far as I know, there's no Canadian links down here or links in general down in Arizona. Jeff, for most wildlife away from the city and track homes. Heck yeah. I mean, unless your track home is like, an island in the middle of the desert, like Maricopa. I mean, Maricopa, you look at Maricopa, it's so far out there. It's like, you got to drive 20 minutes on a freeway before you get to Maricopa to this like suburban oasis uh, or like Anthem track homes and Anthem might see a uh, wildlife or Vistancia or something like that in North Scottsdale, that area, Northwest, uh, Northwest Phoenix, where they have these track homes, but they're way out there in the middle of the desert. You know, those places, yeah, you might see. Those those places will see uh, wildlife. And as a matter of fact, I think even Ahwatukee, because it's so close to South Mountain, they see wildlife like that. But I don't think like places like uh, Tempe or Chandler or anything like that are going to see too much of these. There, there was these little wily coyotes, these rabid coyotes that were people were feeding in Tempe. Uh, but that was about the ext ex extreme extent of that. That's what happens when people start feeding coyotes, feeding javelinas, they start to expect it. They keep coming back. And then the coyotes keep going further and further into the town. And assuming they don't get hit by cars, because, you know, what happens when a coyote tries to cross the road? Chasing a road runner, right? You know, wily coyote, right? Animals should be hunted if you have to eat it. Uh, cat girl, you said animals should be hunted if you have to eat it. Okay. We eat the mountain lions we hunt, said Chuck. Do people eat mountain lion? I did not know that. I did not know that people are eating mountain lion. That is news to me. I I was told that the, the general rule of thumb about hunting and eating animals, it was kind of twofold why you don't eat uh, cats. Cats have paws. Uh, most animals with paws, people do not eat. Another thing that is commonly known, but not necessarily commonly practiced, is if an animal is carnivorous and eats meat for its primary staple diet, people don't typically eat uh, that. Like if you look at the staple, you know, you go to the, the, the market, say, and you look at the choice meats, cows, cows are... Uh, vegetarians right or they eat corn or grass right pork i mean i've seen pork have been pigs have been known to be uh omnivorous oddly enough i mean i, I pigs eat anything i mean I, I was in hawaii and i saw someone feed fish to pigs they'll eat anything 
because the it was like disgusting, like three day old rotted fish, and the pigs ate it. So, but most commonly, pigs eat grain. They don't typically eat um, uh, meat. Uh, what's another thing? Deer, deer, you know, elk, bison. Those are not carnivores. Even if you look at the sea sea animals that you eat, you eat. Um, well, maybe crabs. Crabs, in a way, kind of are carnivorous, aren't they? They're like bottom feeders. Uh, but the other, the other, you know, like some people eat swordfish, some people eat shark, but most commonly it's going to be like trout or something like that, right? Um, Chuck says mountain lion does not scavenge, therefore it's safe to eat. Okay, I that's that's news to me. That's news to me. Do you consider them roaches? What's the difference between a water bug and a roach, says Jayla? Um, a water bug and a roach? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't. Oh, well, I know roach. If you see a dang roach, I mean, those suckers. If you're talking about a cockroach, I, can t I know when I see a cockroach. I don't know about a water bug. We don't have much water in the desert, okay? So I don't know about that. 70 people watching, 66 people pumped up the likes. Thanks to everyone who liked the video, helping to get this video out to so many people over the span of an hour and six minutes now. Um, Cindy says, they do have water bugs here in AZ. I've seen them. Okay. But have you seen them in Phoenix? Desert cockroaches. Yeah, you will see desert cockroaches. Some areas in central Phoenix have cockroach infestations and they just can't, the, the cockroaches just keep on coming. But I've never been to a place anywhere <laughs> personally that I can recall that does not have a problem with cockroaches. Every place in the world that I've been has had a problem with cockroaches. And cockroaches are the type of, those are the type of uh, insect or uh, insect that will get into your U-Haul and people are constantly bringing with them cockroaches from wherever they're moving from. Because, I mean, they just sit in the box. You look in the box, you didn't even know you had a cockroach until you clear the clear the box, you pull everything out, and that, bam, there's a cockroach. Um, Jeff, the water bugs look just like roaches to me, says Jayla. Okay, I, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with water bugs. Let me take a look. Water bugs? Water bugs in Arizona. Okay, they do kind of look like cockroaches. I've, I think I've seen those. I, I thought they were beetles. Yeah, I think I've seen those in pools. I have them here in Las Vegas outside, not inside. Well, that's good. Hopefully they don't go inside. I live in Maricopa County, says Cindy, and she has seen uh, water bugs. So there you go. What about stink bugs? Yeah, I remember stink bugs. Stink bugs, stink bugs in Arizona. I always thought that a uh, stink bug, if I saw a stink bug, that it would stink. And I've seen stink bugs and it never made a smell. <laughs> ah, there's a good one. It's not a bug, but it's an animal. A skunk. Skunks are in Arizona, by the way. Yep, skunk. Those huge roaches, I was told, are palmetto bugs. That reminds me of another bug that's pretty common. Is I called it a, a potato bug. When you say palmetto bug, I think potato bug. They're these little gray bugs. And those, I've been bitten by a potato bug. Potato bugs, they're the type of bug that when you, when you try to catch it, it curls up into a ball, into a gray ball, and it's got like this hard shell, kind of like an armadillo would do. But um, I've actually been... I had one in my glove. I was putting on my baseball glove and in my baseball glove was a bug. That's, that's That brings up a good point. Always shake out your shoes and always shake out your catcher's mitts, your, your baseball gloves, anything you're going to put your hand into that you may not have put your hand into for a while. You should shake it out because there could be bugs in there, especially if it's been in your garage. Because, yeah, I remember I put it on there and I think when I pulled, pulled my hand out, I heard it go ee! Like it made like a little hissing noise. And I was like, ow, what the heck was that? And it was a little potato bug. 
do you squash think do you have squash think bug to make them smell oh okay you have to squash them i don't know hey fallon ocean thanks for joining we're actually about to uh wrap this up here we've been going for an hour and nine minutes now um do you fear anything harming your cat in queen creek says morgan as of this point no um i do at two o'clock in the two o'clock in the morning for like two days in a row i did have a neighbor cat that was so big this neighbor cat was like this big because it was fluffy and it walks with its tail up i literally thought because it was gray i had to zoom in on it and be like is that a coyote or is that a cat that's how big this cat was and i said why is he coming up to my front door but it was on my ring doorbell if you don't have that yet when you get here get a ring doorbell because you'll be surprised the kind of things that your ring doorbell will catch at two o'clock in the morning i mean i had some guy park right in front of my house at three in the morning and i i have a, a camera system called arlo and uh i was like what is that dude doing in front of my house at three in the morning i slept through it i would have never known had i not had a camera system so you'll be surprised what these cameras will catch on there and so that's that's interesting uh Coyotes on ring. You've caught coyotes on ring, Rock Nevada. Wow. All right. Thank you, Inspire Me Studio. I am out of here, guys. Thanks to everyone who smashed up the likes and watched this video. If you just joined late, there, you can start from the beginning, which is where we talk about most of the bugs. And again, thanks for subscribing and keeping up with us at Living in Arizona. And join our group and check us out on Twitter. I did, I did, uh, I have been doing a lot of stuff building up our twitter here i like twitter because it gets out information especially for storms i use twitter for storm tracking i don't like to do it for crime or anything although we could do it for amber alerts um but for the most part it was a good it's a good way to for sports so the things we talk about on twitter i just posted a link there you can join us on twitter if you for those of you who use twitter sports weather and some miscellaneous information about parks and things to do around Arizona. Those are like the three main things. We might add some other stuff in there, like cool stuff like how to save money at um, some water parks. Like we just found out that you go to Big Surf, you can save money at Big Surf uh, by using Groupon. Instead of 35 bucks, it's $20 per person. So that saves money, right? And we'll see you guys next time. And also join us on our Facebook group if you haven't already. Living in Arizona, uh, I'll put the link below and uh, see you guys.